Hi gang, we got the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro like we had hoped. And of course, Apple has those features where you can have it put your phone on silent mode or open the camera. But that's for suckers because if you are a shortcuts master, you can do a lot more with it. I've been having a lot of fun with mine. I'm gonna share the whole shortcut with you now. I'm gonna let you download it, play with it. I think I've got some good ideas here and you can hopefully customize it to make it work for you. So let's dig in. So I'm gonna start out in shortcuts and you can see I've created an action button shortcut and I call it my super action button. And uh, I don't know why I like that. It's cause it's super. Uh, just to give you a heads up, there's a couple things in here I'm doing. The first thing I wanna do is think about when do I want to use this for silent mode? And the more I think about it, the time that I really wanna silent my phone is when it's in my pocket or face down on a desk. So I added that and I got the idea from John Gruber. He has a similar shortcut on his website. His is a little more complicated than mine because I feel like the only thing I wanna do is silent my phone when it's face down. So uh, we've got, the first thing we're gonna do is get the device orientation. You need a third party app for that. It's called Actions. It's a one of those shortcuts apps that adds a bunch of actions and one of it can do is find out where your phone is. Is it face down? Is it face up? Is it whatever? So we're gonna check to see if the phone is face down. That's the very first thing that we run an if statement. And if it is face down, then turn silent mode on. And then we stop the shortcut. Now I could have made that where we toggle the silent mode so it goes on or off, but I felt like I don't want there to be any mistake. If I'm in a theater or I'm in a meeting, I just wanna hold down the action button and know that silent mode is on. So I went ahead and made that to turn silent mode on. And you can see I added an action stop this shortcut. I'm using it repeatedly throughout this shortcut. It's probably not necessary, but it's kind of like a belt and suspenders thing. So once uh, it's face down, I've turned action mode on by hitting the silent mode, and then uh, it stops the shortcut and we're good to go. And this works. So if your phone is face down and you hold down that action button, then you're good to go. Now, let's say your phone is not face down. That's the first if statement. Then we have an otherwise and then we go to focus modes. So uh, focus modes is not the very first thing it checks, it checks if it's face down. If it's not face down, then it checks your current focus mode. And um, if it doesn't have any value, if you don't have a focus mode set, then it allows you to pick a focus mode. And I did this because I'm one of those weirdos that always has my phone in some sort of focus mode. I even have one called personal. So if I'm not working, I put it in personal mode and that keeps the work stuff out. So I am running focus modes 24 seven. If you're not a weirdo like me, then maybe you wanna do something else if there is no focus mode. Maybe you wanna make it the silent mode or make it a camera button, but you can do that and I'll show you later in some of these other focus modes how you can activate those. But for me, if it's not in a focus mode and I hold it down, then it's going to give me a choice to choose a focus mode. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm turning my personal focus mode off and then I'm going to hold down the action button. It's not face down. So the first thing it did is said, okay, well pick a focus mode and I'm gonna put it back in personal. Okay, so now I'm in personal focus mode. So that, that shortcut is working. And you can see at the end of that, after I toggle the focus mode, I again did the stop, the shortcut. And this is just to make sure that nothing else gets triggered. Like uh, I've got an if command later that says, if you're in personal focus mode, what does it do? Well. Theoretically, if this if I don't have that stop this shortcut action there, it may go down and check that next because I would be in personal focus mode and I don't want there to be any confusion. So let's say that I'm in, in personal focus mode when I hold down the action button. Then I'm gonna do a choose from menu action and I'm using this several times because sometimes in different focus modes, there's different options I want for the action button. You could have it just do one thing and that's simpler because it's just gonna do one thing or you could have it choose from a variety of things. And when I'm in my downtime in my personal focus mode, I've got it giving me a choose from menu. Uh, the first thing is track time. And what that just does is open the timer app and let me enter a timer. If I wanted to, I could say track downtime and then it would just run the time reaction to log downtime, but I'm not doing that. The next thing I could do is check my print because I'm getting into this 3D printer. In fact, let me show you that because I'm currently in personal focus mode. If I select the check print button, it's gonna go down here and open the Bamboo Handy, which is the app that shows me in my printer status. So I'm gonna hold down the action button. I'm in personal mode, so I'll hit check print. 
And there we are in the bamboo thing. Look, I'm 98% done. I'm making some gridfinity. This stuff has changed my life. Um, either way, let's go back to the shortcut. Uh, another thing I do is I can open my Kindle app and start reading a book. Uh, Disneyland Reservations, if you're from Southern California and you're a pass holder, you know that they're hard to get. And so we often check for them, like around the dinner table or whatnot. So, uh, and the application is terrible and it makes you go to a website. So I got the URL and I made a shortcut that goes straight to the website where you can check reservations. Uh, so now I can do that on my action button. So if I just hold down the action button and say, check Disneyland Reservations, you can see it's going to take me to the website and let me start checking for my reservations. Nap timer is always good. I like to take naps in downtimes. I always take a 35 minute nap. So if you go down, you'll see I've got an action here to start a timer for 35 minutes. Uh, above that is journal entry. And that is if I wanna do a quick entry into day one. And so if I click journal entry, I just do a capture dictation. So it's a dictate text action from shortcuts and then it creates an entry in day one on that. And like I said, this is gonna be downloadable. You can install it on your phone and do whatever you want with these. Like if you want a journal entry here, you could change that to open the notes app and create a new note and you could write it down there or whatever floats your boat for making a journal entry. This next one here called personal collection is kind of interesting. If you look at my desktop, you see I've got these three icons on the bottom and these are choose from action shortcuts. They, it's a collection of things that I do and there is some overlap here. Uh, but it allows me to go into different things personally that I do all the time. And then I've got another one here for Max Sparky, and it's a bunch of actions that I do as Max Sparky. And so rather than having apps in my dock, I have these personal actions. And if you want, I can do a video for you on that. I've done those in the past in the labs, but maybe we need to update that. Just let me know if you think I should. But going back to shortcuts, I've added that as an option under the personal focus mode action button. So if I'm going to trigger the action button and, open, and I'm in personal mode and I say, give me my personal collection, uh, it's going to prompt you the first time you do this. I just made some changes this morning. Now I've got my personal action focus choices available to me. For instance, you see, I've got the Disneyland reservation one there too. And then the last one I did, and this was a new entry a few days ago as I've been developing this, is in all of these focus modes, I've given myself the ability to choose a new focus mode. And I know that's really easy. You can just swipe down on the upper right corner and pick it there, or you can do it on your watch. But I thought, why not have one more place for it? So if I want, I can go in here and pick a new focus mode. And now I'm gonna put myself into, uh, let's say a Disneyland mode. And now I'm in my Disneyland focus mode. So you can see my home screen changed and you know everything has changed based on Disneyland focus mode. Now going back into the super action button, I'm gonna scroll down to see what is the next one I've got covered. And these aren't in any particular order. But if the check up above to get the current focus mode doesn't return personal, then the next thing it looks to see is, does it return podcasting? So is it podcasting? And if I'm doing podcasting, I've got a different set of things I do. I still have the track time one because I track time for each show, but I also have one called check time. And all that does is open up the uh, clock app to the world clock because I want to know what time it is for my podcast partners who are in London and Memphis. So if I go ahead and trigger that, let me put myself in podcasting mode first. All right, so I'm going to hold down the action button. It's found podcasting. And one of the things you'll note that top line, I wrote down in the choose from action menu, the, the current focus mode. So I always know, so I'm in podcasting focus mode check time. If I click that, it opens the world clock with Memphis and London. Now going back to the shortcut, that this is where I put that those titles. Podcasting focus mode is here. If you go up above, you'll see that it's personal focus mode there. I thought that was a kind of a clever way to do that. So uh, after uh, checking time, I've also got Notify Sparks Prime. That is my immediate nuclear family. And sometimes I go into record a show and I want to make sure everybody knows if they're all home. So I send a text message that says, gang, I'm going to be podcasting for the next few hours. And I send that to my wife and my daughter. When my other daughter's home from UCLA, she gets added to this as well. But it's usually for the people who are home with me. They get a text. They know I have a recording light, but sometimes they don't notice that. So they get a little notice. And all that is done just by triggering the action button, 
for podcasting and then tapping notify sparks prime i also have a recording light that's outside the door and i can turn that off or on through focus modes and the way i do that is just through a, a home app scene set so i've got a scene or actually a light called recording light and i just turn it on or i turn it off and i've got one for each so i can do that just by hitting the action button uh, I also have that Max Sparky collection I told you about earlier. So in addition to the personal, I've got the Max Sparky one. And I can trigger that as well from this action mode. So at the bottom, it says Max Sparky collection. Just click that. Again, it's going to prompt this because I just reset them. But once you do that once, you'll never have that again. And then going back, the last one I have in the podcast one is New Focus, which is something you're going to see repeatedly. I always give myself the ability to change the focus from the action button. And then again, I put in that stop this shortcut action just to make sure everything comes to the ground. The next one I told you is Disneyland. I've, I showed you that one before, but let me trigger it. So I'm going to go in podcast mode, click New Focus, and then set myself to Disneyland as my New Focus mode. Now, what I've done for Disneyland is this one is not a choose from menu. It's just a single action, and it's open the camera. It is what some people want to use the action button for 24-7. If I'm at Disneyland, that's all I want to do with the action button is open the camera. I don't need to choose from menu. I don't need to set a timer. I don't need to change a focus mode. I just want to trigger the camera. So if I go now to my home screen and I go ahead and hold the action button down because I'm in Disneyland mode. It goes straight to the camera. Look at that. I love those uh, Ugg Monk Wheat cards, by the way, gang. Those are amazing. And there's a little baby Yoda. Okay, so we'll close that. Go back to super action button and scrolling down. We've covered Disneyland. That's a short one because it's just a single action. So the next thing we check for is work. And this is one of the built-in focus modes in uh, iOS. And I have added a series of things here. These, some of these will be familiar. Track time, work lights, lights out. Those I haven't shown you yet. I've got a variety of settings in the home app where the way I want the lights set when I'm working and the way I want to turn the lights out. Um, Max Barkey collection is the same thing in new focus is again to open a new focus. One thing I'll show you on lights out is I want to turn out all the lights in indoor studios when I leave the room, but that usually means I'm done working too. So when I trigger lights out, not only do I turn the lights out, I also turn the work focus mode off because I'm no longer doing that. Now I could change that to choose a new focus, but I don't. I just went ahead and made it that I turn uh, the, uh, the work focus mode off. But those are all pretty similar to the ones I've shown you before. Uh, and you'll see as you start doing this that you use similar ones throughout the, your various focus modes so they don't get as exciting as you kind of nail it down. Production is another one. Production is a little more serious for me. That's when I'm recording stuff. So I've got stuff in here for turning the recording lights on and off. I've got a different set of light setups for recording video. I call that studio lights. I hit that every time before I talk to you in, on camera in the labs or anywhere. Uh, I also have work lights when I'm doing editing and lights out to leave and turn the focus mode off with a Max Sparky collection and new focus at the end. None of those are new, but you can see how they're all contextually related to whatever focus mode I'm in. Uh, scrolling down, driving. That was a weird one for me because I don't usually touch my phone when I'm driving. I have one of those things where you plug it into the car play and you don't think about it, but I thought, well, what would I want to do? Well, I don't want to choose from menu while I'm driving. I don't want to look at my phone. But I thought it would be fun to be able to push the action button while I'm driving and send my current location to my wife, wherever that is. So that's what I did. If the focus mode is driving, get the current location and send it to Daisy Spark. So that's a very simple action, two steps. But all I have to do is reach down to my little um, side compartment, hit the action button, and I know I just sent her my location, which can help when I'm coming home or when I'm off into the world and I want to let her know where I'm at. Another one is sleeping. That was an odd one for me. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that. But there's a couple things at night that I like to do. Um, one is sometimes the thought occurs to me. I guess we all have that experience once in a while where you're laying in bed and you're like, oh, this is something I should do or something I should write down. So I have one called capture thought. So when I'm in sleeping mode, if I hold the action button, I get a choose from menu. If I hit capture thought, it opens drafts with dictation so I can just speak with it. My wife probably doesn't appreciate that, but she's a sound sleeper. 
Uh, the next one is reading, and it just opens the Kindle app so I can read in bed. And the last one is toggle focus. Sometimes I get out of bed early and I want to get out of sleep mode so I can do that very easily. Uh, do not disturb mode for me is almost like a deep focus mode because I do, if you look at my do not disturb focus, I still let like my wife and kids through and a couple of people. So it's not completely do not disturb, but it is kind of deep work for me. Uh, I have tinnitus. I like noise all the time, but I don't want music or, or um, words, especially if I'm really trying to focus. I do find that the dark noise thunderstorm does help. So I made an action that sets the playback to the indoor studio's speakers and plays a thunderstorm sound. Um, capture thought is just like I had at nighttime, because sometimes if you're doing deep work and a random thought occurs to you, you just dictate it into drafts and then get back to work without thinking about it anymore. And I can also toggle my focus modes. And again, it's got to stop the shortcut. Gang, that's it. So the last piece of this is you go into your settings application and tie your super action button shortcut to the action button. So I'm just going to go and search here and type action button and you see it gets me right there. And they've got this really cool animation where you can scroll through them. And by default, it's on silent mode, but you want to scroll over until you get the shortcuts icon there and then you pick it. And I have picked the super action button as mine. You can see, you just need to search it out and put it there. And now you have glued the super action button shortcut to the action button itself. So as you can see, I'm using basically a two tiered approach to the action button. The first thing it does is it is a silent button check. And that is all dependent on whether the phone is face down or not. If the phone is face down, it silences the phone. And that's the one time I truly want that action button to be a silence button. After that, it becomes a contextual computing tool for me. So if I'm in production or work, it gives me a list of things I can choose from. If I'm at Disneyland, it opens the camera. If I'm asleep, it can allow me to write down a quick idea before I go back to sleep. It really works with me throughout my day, all reliant on these focus modes. I find this super powerful. And we had something like this with the Apple Watch Ultra because it had an action button too. But the Apple Watch Ultra has a smaller screen and not as much shortcuts power. On the iPhone 15 Pro, that action button really gets wings. And if you've got the new iPhone 15 Pro and you've got an action button, I highly recommend trying this because it can really help you out. Like I said earlier, I've got the link in this post. You can download that shortcut. It's not gonna work exactly for you as you install it because you may not have the Kindle app or you may not have a focus mode called podcasting, but it gives you all the bones and you can go through and rename the focus modes to match yours and reassign the applications that make sense for you or the shortcuts that make sense for you, but really make this yours. And I encourage you to do that. I realize it's gonna take an hour or two to kind of get it set up, but after you're done, that little action button on your iPhone 15 Pro becomes super powerful. Check it out and thanks for all your support in the Max Sparky Labs.